<laughs> I got to teach you how to selfie, Mom. <laughs> Do you want to hold it? No. <laughs> Hi guys! Hi! So this video is going to be obviously with my mom, aka Mimi, so how everybody knows her. I did a video last time I did beta. I did one called All About Kaisen, All About Kaden, All About Lilia, and now this one is going to be All About Mimi. People just always want to know more about Mimi because Mimi's so involved and Mimi's so happy all the time. Are you nervous? Yes. <laughs> so I convinced her to sit down and make a video with me. And we're just gonna talk about Mimi's childhood and Mimi growing up and how Mimi became the amazing person she is today. <laughs> the best mom and the best Mimi ever. Let's start from the very beginning. What's your birthday again? I'm just kidding. <laughs> so when were you born? All right, so I was born in 1968. And September 24th. Yes. My mom got married in 1966, she was 19. She had me when she was 21. She ended up one semester shy of a bachelor's degree at some point because she had babies and went to college like I did and yeah. like you did. Yeah. <laughs> and so then my sister was born and then my brother was born. So there were three of us growing up. She's the oldest. Grew up in Houston, Texas. So when I was 10, my parents got divorced and my mom became a single mom. She worked long hours so that she could you know, try to feed us. So I just remember in the summer when I was 11, she would go to work and she left me in charge and so my sister was a year younger and my brother was four years younger and my mom would leave at early in the morning and she'd leave ten dollars on the table and say to me now Wendy would you like to be in charge and I was like yeah she's like okay I'm gonna leave you some money and you get to go do all the shopping and cooking for your brother and sister today and I was like yay so I never really thought of it as like a, a burden because I was so excited to get to have that responsibility. Yeah. Well, I have to Ten year old cooking meals. I did, I would open a can of spaghetti and put them in the saucepan. Spaghettios. Spaghettios, yeah, and spaghetti. There were no microwaves then, I'm just saying. Really? So you had to, yeah, heat it up on the stove and then I got first dibs and then I'd give my siblings the rest. <laughs> and so they'd go off and play and I'd cook and do the dishes and I just thought it was all that. So I, My mom had a great attitude toward it and so I picked up on the attitude and I was like, ooh, I'm the privileged one. I get to do all this, so I loved it. <laughs> so at times, uh, being a single mom, she would work really hard but still struggle with money. At one time, the power got shut off because that, apparently that's what happens when you don't pay the bills. <laughs> and so she came home from work and here are her three little kids took in the dark and. Well, I mean, it was getting dark, and, and she's like, oh, what happened? And we're like, well, this guy came in this truck, and he, like, turned our electricity off. And she goes, well, then we'll just have to have a candlelight picnic. And so she lit candles, and we had, like, cheeses and salami and crackers. We thought it was the coolest thing to have a picnic in the dark <laughs> until the electricity got turned back in on a few days later. She had to get by. She had to survive, and she She's, did. Yeah. And, and she had a positive attitude about it. She didn't break us, you know, so things happened. But she worked hard, and so I... That instilled in us a, a, a working ethic to where yeah. we work as hard as we can, and if there's struggles, you just deal with them day at a time and get through it and move on to the next one. <laughs> there's so, a lot of stories with Grammy. Yeah, there's. there's but a few. she's yeah, she's a character. So when I was 16, she's still divorced, and she came home from work, and she says we were still living in Houston, Texas, and my dad, who we would visit on a regular basis, moved to Oklahoma, so he was no longer close by. So my mom comes home from work and she says, hey kids, you know, since your dad moved away and he's, you're gonna have to fly to go visit him anyway, let's move to California. <laughs> and so we did, but uh, we sold everything we had. We loaded up two cars, an old VW, an old Sunbird. We loaded up the old trailer, and it was a tiny little pop-up trailer permanently popped up. So it was three kids, three dogs, two old cars, an old trailer, and my mom. <laughs> she didn't have a job, she didn't have a place to live, and she had very little money. But she said, hey kids, let's go camping, which we'd never done before, by the way. So we were driving across the country, and we were staying in this park, so it was lots of peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> anyway, we made it to Can't California, and first thing, she, we're getting low on money, and first thing she says is, Let's go to Hollywood and see it! And we're like, okay! You're 16 now? I'm 16. So I drove and my mom drove across the country. So we get to California, we park my car and the old trailer in a campground, because that's all we could afford. And we drive into Hollywood in the old VW bus. Turns out, if you don't put oil in the car, 
it dies. And so my mom says to the kids, or else we just did it, I don't know. We got out of the bus on the LA freeway and started to try to push the car. Oh my God. And then we hear, get back in the car. We're like, what the, at CHP saying, get in the car. And so he shoves us to the side and then they tow the bus to the gas station. And then my mom's out of money. We kind of live in the bus in the parking lot for a few days. She calls my dad and she's like, hey, uh, ex-husband, the kids got to come stay with you for a couple weeks and so we, and luckily it was summer, we went and stayed with my dad and then she found a job, found an apartment and when we came back she got a place for us to live. Does so, mean he bought the plane ticket? He did buy the plane ticket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, back in those days they didn't really regulate child support and so he just kind of sent money whenever my mom asked and my mom didn't want to ask very often so we had uh, utilities turned off. <laughs> so the whole time, my mom's never like, oh my God, we have no money, what are we gonna do? But she was like, oh, we're really low on money. Do you guys want ice cream? And we went to the ice cream store. She got a job working in uh, Hollywood, um, working on TV shows, bringing in audience members, and she got me a job there. So my 16 year old job was working on TV shows. It was so cool. Every 16 year old's dream. So I got to work at age 16, 17, 18, 19 as a page in Hollywood where you you work on TV shows like Jeopardy and uh, The Joan River Show and Growing Pains. We just helped manage the audience. We would bring them in, set them down, and tell them where the bathrooms were and things like that. But it's significantly more enjoyable than probably working at McDonald's, I don't know. So when I was 18, I was like, I don't like LA. My mom loved it, I didn't like it. So I was like, I'm gonna go find a small town to live in. So I jumped in my car, just like a weekend trip, and started driving north. And just checked randomly. out Bakersfield. I was like, mm, it's okay. Fresno, yeah, it's, it's all right. Modesto, yep, there we go. That's where I want to live. So moved to Modesto, didn't know anybody. My mom helped me buy a trailer to live in. Went to college, met her father. So that you met him. In school, that first... Uh, You're 19? I was still 18. 18. My first boyfriend, and I married him. Yes. And then your dad was my second boyfriend, and I married him. <laughs> okay, so you met my papa in school? Yeah, we met in college. Okay. And uh, started dating, and got married in 1989, and so I was 21. Lincoln, you wanna come say hi? Look at you're so cute. Say we hi. A diver. <laughs> say hi. <laughs> so I wanted to be a mom so bad. I was so excited to hopefully get pregnant, and I did. I was a little did over you? halfway done with college, but I was working so your papa could go to college. Oh, that's right. And so I thought, well, if I have to work and I can't go full time anyway, I want a baby. So, so you're married for two years already, too. Yeah. And yeah. You're 23, so. So then I had you, and then. Didn't was... you say that you decided that you were gonna have a baby, and then like the first time you tried, you got pregnant? Yeah. You just you just look at us and we get pregnant. Apparently. And my mom too. Yeah. Oh and her god. mom too. Oh my god. <laughs> I was working part time, and um, when I wanted to get pregnant the second time. I said, I don't want to work, and so her papa got a better job, and I was able to be a stay-at-home mom. I did a little bit of daycare, too, so I could have to earn a little That's bit of right. money. So did you try to get pregnant with Ben? Yeah. Two? You guys are two years and two months apart, so That's you right. still so, one. Oh, still one. But we, before she was born, her grandma, so Grandma Gigi, uh, we, didn't know, we didn't know if she was a boy or a girl. Oh, and, that's right. Yeah. So when she was born, she was a girl. And before that, her G, her grandma said, "Oh, it'd be so cool if you had a red head." And I was like, "I don't have a red. I don't have red hair." Probably yeah. Her natural hair. hair color is like dirty blonde. Yeah, it's a, a dark, a dark, dirty blonde. And, and my out, papa is brown. Out came this gorgeous red-haired baby. She was so excited. <laughs> what are the chances? Yeah. Like, no. So with Ben, we knew we were having a boy, and we thought, "Oh, I'm gonna another redhead," but he's got my hair. Yeah. Down. So things didn't work out and we got divorced in 97. Things didn't work out. And I out. moved back to Modesto. At what point did you move back to Fresno? Because so I was I got, born in Fresno. That's right. So I got married to Papa. We moved to Fresno because he had a job down there. Oh, okay, gotcha. And then I came back in 97. So I always loved Modesto. Always wanted so to you to divorced in 97? 97. Okay. And so then I met dad in 97 and 98 we blended our families it was a blessing in disguise because divorce was horrible and i absolutely hated it and yeah it was like the worst thing that ever happens and uh luckily he and i were friendly and we still are friendly and my papa yeah yeah, yeah. And they, they never uh, had this is where i get all my co-parenting views <laughs> like you wouldn't even know that i came from like a divorced family you know i don't i would i never thought like any differently like I, there was never any fighting there was never any like, oh, your dad is horrible, or oh, your mom is a bitch. Like, it was none of that was yeah. ever. Everybody got along, everybody still gets along. We all Even get my together. dad and my papa get along. Yeah. My papa ended up marrying the girl that he cheated on my mom with, <laughs> and she still got along with this girl. And so their, so their son, Tyler, love you, Tyler, 
He, we love Tyler. He, no, he's like part of our family. Yes. I, ca I call him my backward stepson. <laughs> he calls her mom. He comes over and calls her Because he comes camping with us. He comes swimming. And he's, he's like five years younger than Ben. Yeah, and, and he and Ben are like that. And then my dad had two kids from a previous relationship, so they never had any, my mom and my dad never had any together. And so I met dad in, in 97, we got married in 98. I'm lucky to find this big house with a bunch of bedrooms and a pool. Okay, go on. Hi! <laughs> so I was still a stay-at-home mom, and uh, my stepson Greg lived with us for a little while, and Jacqueline visited us quite, quite a bit. Greg, would, when you didn't live with us, you would spend lots of parts of summers with us. Uh, so off and on, I was going to college, take a few years off. Oh, that's right. Take a couple classes, take a few years off, because you, you have to do what your family needs and your kids kids need. But but I was going to get a degree if I had to wait till I was 90. But I was lucky enough to to go back to college more or less full time in 2001. To school. So I was in third grade, and you started going back to school. Yeah. And actually, it wasn't completely full time at first. Yeah, I started with you, like a class. You would work in my classrooms forever. Yes, like you were loved. always the parent that volunteered. Oh, always the room all, like the field trips. Yeah, I mean, and everything. the Girl Scout, always. Girl Scout leaders. And then I was always a soccer mom. With Ben's That's team right. And going yeah. to all her dance conventions because I yeah. loved that stuff. We loved it. I finally graduated when I was 35 in 2005. Got my degree, and then 2006 I got my teaching credential and started working full-time from then on. But as a teacher, full-time is a little flexible. You can come yeah. home and grade papers when the kids are in bed. Or I would take papers to Ben's soccer games and grade them there. I'd take them yeah, to dance remember. classes and grade you them there. You still do that now. I still do that. Take the kids to the zoo and the whole drive there. You're yeah, grade right. <laughs> it's flexible. And it's also the best job ever. <laughs> so I love being a mom so much. I thought, oh, being a grandma is going to be cool, you know, whatever. It's not going to be like being a mom. But when her kids came around, I was blown away. She by likes them more than she how likes much me. I love having those kids around. I, I know I would love them and I would think they're fun, but when we go camping for the weekend and we don't take them by Sunday night, I'm missing them so much. If we don't have Facebook on, we're depending where on Saturday. I'm like looking at old pictures. She blows up my Facebook. <laughs> Like Wendy, 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 Wendy. So I hope all grandparents feel that way. I don't know. Well, you have good hours being a grandparent, a grandma, because you're gone all day and then you come home for two hours, and <laughs> play with them, and then they go to sleep. That's true. And you get all the weekends. <laughs> I don't have to do the cleaning. I don't have to do the diaper changing. <laughs> yep. I can't wait to be grandma. Do and I get fun. to hand it back when they cry and poop. Yeah. <laughs> Take them to the zoo and come back and say, "Here you go. They're tired and cranky and hungry. <laughs> Bye." <laughs> so how did you feel? when I told you I was pregnant with Lilia. Did we tell the story before? We might have, we might have talked about this before, I'm not sure. Cause I did an interview with you one other time. Yeah. Years ago. In, in California in sixth grade, the sixth graders get to go away to, it's called outdoor school, but some people call it camp cause you're, they stay in like dorms. We're up in the mountains and there's no cell, cell phone service. So you can, when I came back, you know, I called on my family and I was like, oh my God. Called hers. How are you doing? Oh, fine. Had to go to the doctor. I was like, oh, did you, did you have a sinus infection or something? I was so nervous. And she's like, no, I'm pregnant. And I was literally, I literally stopped in the middle of the sidewalk where I was at school. I was walking back to my classroom. I stopped. And I said something like, no. And I'm pretty sure you said, no, it's for real or something. And I was like, well, at least our, how long or when you do. You, yeah. And I just remember you were like... Should be due in June, so I was like, okay, so you'll be 18, you have a car, you have a job, yeah. and you can still finish school, I did. I mean, I think you were like a little bit, I don't know if disappointed is the word. Worried. Off guard, worried maybe. Yeah, worried. But you were like, you know what, it could be a lot worse. I remember you said that. It that could exactly. be so much worse. Because it was going to be after I had been, I had been with Gabe for four oh, years. It's not like it was some, I mean, not that that like justifies getting pregnant young. But it had more advantages than other situations could have. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, can you think of anything else? No, can you? I don't think so. <laughs> I think that's pretty much it. That sums up Mimi's life. Now she's in into camping every weekend, <laughs> every other weekend. Yeah, she'll switch off taking grandkids so she gets to spend one-on-one -on -one time. Oh, okay. Kyson, do you like to go camping? Yeah. Yeah. What Where do you like to do camping? Camping. <laughs> you like camping when you're camping? You like to play in the water? No. Do you no. like to play on the swing? No. Do you like to go on the boat? No. Do you like to play with the dirt? Yeah. You like to <laughs> they found the cookies and we're filming. We're being a bad mom and Mimi right now. <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much sums it up. Thank you for doing a video with me. I just gotta say I'm proud of you. Oh. My, my first
course, baby. Nice. <laughs> She's the best mom. <laughs> the best baby ever. Are you guys all gonna come say bye now? Bombarded by children. Ah! <laughs> bye.